Welcome to Peace in the Valley, where adventure starts at home. Good evening. Don't mind my parents. The humidity level is at 112% tonight, so everything is curly and wet. But tonight I wanted to share with you guys one of my favorite things to make. I have a lot of favorites. I don't know if you noticed yet, but um, when you grow pesto in the garden, what can you use it for? This is off of three plants that I've had growing since, well, since you've seen that video when we planted our garden. And here's this, oh, it smells so good. Mm, so we're gonna make some basil pesto tonight. And I'm gonna show you the traditional version and then in the description, for this video, I'm also gonna put in how you can make it vegan, which all you vegan people know, we use a special ingredient called nutritional yeast when we don't wanna use uh, a dairy product, but we still want that cheesy flavor. So, but anyway, this is just a basic basil recipe. And what it is, is we're gonna use two cups of the basil and we're just gonna pack it in just as tight as we can, these leaves. And then we are going to use a third of a cup of pine nuts. And if you don't want to splurge for pine nuts, because I bought a five ounce thing, I bought two of them. They were $7.99 for five ounces. I mean, it's going to go a long way. Like I have a lot of pesto to make. We're just making one batch tonight. So I'll probably, it's probably like, I'll get three batches out of one container. And then after the pine nuts, we are going to use some salt and then, oh, the most important part, Parmesan. So you get the block of Parmesan and you just grate it up. You have fun. And you can use Parmesan or Romano. Um, and we're going to use, for this recipe, we're going to use a half a cup to go with the two cups of basil, the third cup of pine nuts about eh, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. One more, a little less, probably taste it to see. And then at the end, you drizzle in that olive oil and we got about a half a cup here. And extra virgin olive oil, I like to use it the best because it's the cold press. You're gonna get all the yummy and oily nutrients out of that. So first we have to mix in the basil and the pine nuts and mix all that together. If you have some big leaves that have some big stems, I might want to get them off. I didn't do that. When I harvested, I tried to cut off any big, big ones. The stems are just more bitter. That's why we do that. Nobody likes bitter. That's why we had to stop harvesting our lettuce. I don't like a bitter salad. I have a hard time liking salad when it's not bitter. And then you add bitter to it and I'm not gonna eat it. My first cup wasn't as full as it could be, so I'm gonna make this one a little extra full. Look how big some of these leaves were. They were gorgeous. I only found one caterpillar. But this was off, this big bowl was only off of three plants. I've got about eight to nine more out there with that are just as big as these. It's crazy. That's such jungly weather right now. Okay. Oops, I missed a few long stems. I am using my Ninja to mix this up. Um, food processor works well too. There's just less parts to my Ninja. My food processor takes longer to clean up. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna use a little less than a quarter of a teaspoon just because I know how salty Parmesan cheese is. Then I'll taste it at the end and I can add some more in. So I'm gonna add about three-fourths. Okay, then, oh, forgot the most important part, the funnest part is garlic, three cloves of garlic, don't forget that. And a note about cloves of garlic. If you pick off your cloves and you run across this little tiny thing, technically that's a clove. I'm sorry, it's not gonna cut it for one. So I added it with another one. Always err on the side of more garlic, I say. It's good stuff, it's good for you. In fact, I think an acquaintance of mine just wrote, co-wrote a cookbook entitled it something about garlic. Something, I forget the title, but I believe I got her cookbook. Oh, double the garlic maybe? I can't wait to try some recipes out of there. And don't worry, I won't be stealing them to put on this channel. This is a Pampered Chef uh, garlic press. Works awesome if you don't like to peel garlic. Now we blend. My ninja's not up for this task. I have to break out that food processor after all. I think it'll do this little batch, but when I do the big batches, I'll probably get out the food processor. So if you're doing a small batch and you got a ninja and it'll work, if you got a big batch you're gonna do, like multiples of this, I'd get out the food processor. It'll do it better. Okay, so you do it until it's just all mushed up. You got tons of just mushed stuff in here. You got all your big leaves all crunched up, you're all good. Now what we're gonna do is you drizzle in the olive oil. So I'm just gonna turn it on and I'm gonna drizzle so it starts blending together.
that just blends it all up and it's so pretty and green. We love basil in this house. We use it on so many things. Pizza, pasta, sandwiches. As a dip. It is just so good. And I'm sure more fancy people have way more things that they can use it for. Those are just a few off the top of my head that we do on a regular basis. We buy those big giant jars of it at Costco when it's not summertime. Last year I didn't plant enough basil. I couldn't make pesto this year. I didn't have as many, had just as many plants last year as this year, but it did not. Nothing did as well last year. This year is doing real well. We need a little bit more salt, so we're going to add a little bit more. Just a tiny bit and blend it just one more time and then we're good. And there we go. We have freshly made pesto. It's really quick and you can use it right away or you can store it in the fridge for like up to, um, since it's got olive oil in it and the fridge is gonna keep a little longer, but keep the tabs on it. I'd say in the fridge, not longer than a month, as long as you're checking on it and using it regularly if you want. You can also freeze it and to do that, you're gonna mix everything up except for the Parmesan. So you'll have all this pesto without the Parmesan. And then whenever you're ready to use it, you take it out of the freezer, add the proportion of Parmesan that you need uh, and blend it together and then it's ready to go. Because when you freeze Parmesan, it does something weird. I don't know what it does, but it's like, takes out all the, whatever, you can look it up. So anyway, in the description for this video um, is going to be this recipe. Um, it is simple, so easy. It's a basic recipe that I've just kind of tweaked to make my own because I've made it so many times and I've just adjusted. Like my third cup of pine nuts, it was a heaping because I like a little more. Now, if you want to substitute walnuts, go ahead. With walnuts, especially because they're so big and bulky, heaping third cup and um and the salt adjusted to taste um i put down a quarter of a teaspoon i started with a little more than an eighth of a teaspoon and then i added another because i wasn't sure because with the fresh basil sometimes you just don't know and even the different kinds of parmesan that you buy different saltiness it's weird um, and then also in the description, I will have how to veganize it. Um, you add nutritional yeast, a little bit of lemon juice, and then you have to have a little bit of water also, um, just to compensate for that change in the cheese to the nutritional yeast is just the powder. So this is fresh basil pesto. Remember, like and subscribe to our channel, Peace in the Valley.